Hey, greetings. Welcome to the vlog. Uh, and if you're not subscribed to the vlog, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. Uh, so this is the vlog of performance reviews. And today we're going to be talking about some of the actual reviews I've been doing lately, which has been these four vacuums. And they seem similar and different, but I think when you think of it, the shark, which I've been I'm trying to give the benefit of a doubt to, but it, again, it's still a shark. Nothing has changed. The shark and the lint house are actually very similar. They're both large item pickup machines, except the lint house works and the shark doesn't. Uh, so these two have had a great challenge to post a review on and do. I recently posted the Henry Pet Care review, and that was great, you know. It's a, it's a great little machine. If you have, like, low-pile rugs, like really low pile rugs or hard floor, he's perfect. But I have soft carpet, so it's really hard for me to review some of these machines. And the same goes with the Shark and the Lind House, is that they are meant for a lower pile carpet than what I have personally in my house. Now, I could just use it in my basement, you know, and call it good with this super low pile I have down here, but I don't think that's fair. So I've been, you know, vacuuming along there. None of these machines really lend themselves to my housing situation or the test bed we use here at Performance Reviews, so reviewing them is kind of challenging. Though, I think the Henry was the easiest of all of them. Now, upon testing the Lind House, a couple things. So this gate has three positions that opens up, you know, in the front. The problem with that is on my soft pile carpet, this thing's a little hard to push, so I have to leave the gate open, that's fine, but then the, a little bit of suction's bled out the front, a little bit more than I'd like. So I've been using this, and I like using this. The maneuverability of this, by the way, is probably the most underrated feature. This thing maneuvers fantastically well. So as we pull the cover off, you notice there's a soft rubber bumper there, and a soft rubber bumper around here, because you are pushing a big box around on the floor. Um, you know, again, it's not really any bigger than pushing a lot of vacuums, but it, it seems that way. And it is taller though. This is deceivingly tall. Um, I wish they had left the front kind of like how you see it now and started the compartment here. I would have preferred that because but when you put this cover on, this doesn't get under a lot of stuff. So I've been trying to fill up this bag, and my wife, every time she sees this, asks me how big the bag is, like four or five times. Like, it's really funny. Uh, and the bag is not really, you know, small or anything. I mean, if we compare this bag to, to like a, a Mila GN bag, you can see, even though it's the shape is different, it's about the same size, uh, especially if we start talking about depth, because it is, uh, but it's an odd-shaped bag. So I've got it about half full right now. Um, and I did have to adjust the bag check indicator to my altitude. And I, one of the problems with this bag check indicator is when you have the gate open, it's not going to work. So it's a very quirky machine. The other thing I noticed is I had thought originally this was a two motor machine. I'm wrong. This is the single motor out of an upright stuck here with a, just a very long geared belt. So that's kind of cool. Um, from that motor, makes it a little less money to manufacture. Uh, but again, interesting. Another thing I've noticed about, about this is there's a big compartment where the battery is. But there's no battery on this model, so uh, there's a lot of wasted space there. I don't think it's a bad machine or anything like that. It's just very strange, very quirky, and has been just a challenge overall um, to film in my situation. And then it because of its uh, overall height, I can't actually get in a lot of the spaces I need to in my house. So why I love to use it, why it's easy to maneuver, it just doesn't get in certain spaces. So it's been a challenge to review. And when I'm done reviewing, I'm not sure if I'm just gonna throw this back up on eBay or keep it. I'm not sure what we're gonna do with this while I'm done for review. Well, I did get a good deal on it. I don't know if I can justify keeping it. Um, let's just take a look and see, oh, I did that just now. So my dog had chewed some stuff on the floor. I did this, all right, that's all from the dog. But everything else, uh, like I said, has just been pretty much just getting sucked in there, the way that this works. And these casters in front uh, make it work well. In fact, 
this maneuver is very similar to a Mila art. That's what this really feels like, is just a wider Mila art. All right, on to the white elephant in the room, the Vacmaster. I don't like this thing. I don't like it so much that I haven't even wanted to do a review on it after getting it. That's how much I dislike this machine. And it's got plenty of power. The cord length is fine. It's this hose, the high center of gravity, the smell of the machine. The smell of the machine is pretty bad. Uh, and then the parking just sitting, you know, in my basement, not getting used. The parking thing uh, got bent and came undone. I don't know if you can see the stress on the plastic there. I actually took a heat gun and straightened it out. But basically, the stress of the hose, the hose was so stiff that parked just like this in my basement, it basically torqued this out of its parking spot. And again, that has to do with this hose. And it give you an idea how stiff this hose is. Like it's like, it actually is gonna stand this up in a straight line. That's how stiff this hose is. I dislike that. I think if this had a different hose, I wouldn't be uh, fussing with it, but that's, that's really the deal breaker on this machine. Um, so I think what I'm going to do with this is we're going to do a comparison between this and a regular Henry. For those who need to know that information, whether the wish.com Henry is any good. And the answer is, as a secondary vacuum, I think these things are acceptable, but anyway, so that's why there hasn't been a review of this. I dislike this machine. And I think the people who really like this are people who don't actually have Henry's. So it fills that void for them, but it just doesn't do anything for me, and it's really hard to review something so bad. I think the Shark is actually a little nicer to use than this machine. I know, you never thought I'd say a Shark is better than something. <laughs> but anyways, that's where we are with that. One other thing. We're going to be doing an upright versus a canister video. And one of those things is, I was trying to pick which one of the uprights in my collection was I gonna do a video. The canister choice I thought was pretty simple. I'm just gonna use a Mila C3 because I think it illustrates all the points. And I recently got this little wood thing out at Ikea. I think that's gonna be very nice in films. I, I kinda, after going through all the options for like a half a day I was thinking about it. I think this is gonna be the machine to illustrate the shortcomings of an upright, even though it's got a swivel neck. Um, but if there's a machine, in my collection or a machine you'd like to see an upright versus a canister, I think this is gonna be the matchup. I am gonna put in the Mila upright uh, in that video as well, because I think that's probably the best upright like just ever made period. I think that's, I think that personally is the best upright uh, in terms of a feature set. And again, I know it, it's whatever, but it, that, that's my personal opinion on that. Uh, that's going to be an interesting video. It's going to be a hard video to shoot because I'm going to have to shoot a lot of things and do a voiceover. And I will try to do a different voiceover than that robotic sound you hear from my uh, sound card. I got this thing all put together. Um, I'm missing a belt. and I don't want to really pull a belt off another vacuum cleaner, but I did get this guardsman put back together. And I've decided I'm going to save this to the collection. Even though this is not one of the better guardsmen's, it's a TTI guardsman. And this is not a very common one of all the guardsmen because they've only made them for like a short period of time. And I think they make small batches and there's new old stock, but I think they've actually stopped production of this, finally. Uh, but it's kind of the last of the convertibles. And I think it's worth saving, especially for uh, the $10.99 it cost. So I'm going to keep this, and uh, hopefully we'll do a video of this running in the next vlog. I also need to address this in the vlog. I guess it wasn't clear, but the working vacuum gauge that you see in my videos is a commercially available device. This is not something I cobbled together in my shop, though I can make these, and I have... Uh, there was a small period of time where I could assemble them for less money than I could purchase them. That has, of course, changed. So this is a commercially available thing. Uh, from a central vacuum wholesaler. So if you are interested in one of these, I do have a couple of these for sale on my website if anybody wants one, but I just thought I'd mention this is a commercially available thing. Well, thanks for watching the vlog. Make sure you're subscribed, share this video, and uh, one more thing.
we have a Discord server. So if you want to talk about vacuums, not in the comments section, but like actually interact and post pictures and stuff, check out the Discord link below. Have yourself a wonderful day.